One of the requirements of shooting exteriors is the ability to capture deep blue skies. Contrary to popular belief, this is not achieved by shooting in a location with blue skies. Of course that helps, but having blue skies does not automatically mean you can capture it on film or data. There are reasons why shots like these are difficult to achieve, but there are techniques that can be used to achieve them. Let's start by studying this shot from a Nestle commercial. As you can see, the exposure is quite well balanced. The actors under the canopy are exposed correctly, meaning they are clear and detailed, with no over or under exposure. The sky is also exposed correctly. If this was overexposed, the blue would be washed out towards white, and the clouds would not be defined. This shot, however, could not have been achieved without exposure techniques to balance the actors under the canopy and the blue sky. Because skies are inherently bright, there is going to be at least a three-stop gap between the two exposures. If the talents have an exposure of f8, the sky will be around f22. If I expose for the talents at f8, the sky washes out. If I expose for the sky at f22, I lose the detail in my talents. This is the difficulty when attempting to penetrate blue skies. They are just brighter than everything else on the frame. Standard grading can save some color to an overexposed sky, but if you have no detail or contrast, the colorist cannot create it. This commercial was all shot during the day with blue skies. The colorist turned all the blues to reds to make it look like it was a hot sunset. But the darkness of the red on the top of the sky was the same as the darkness of the blue when we shot it on film. To do this, I had to dramatically lower the exposure of the sky to be three stops under the exposure of the talents. This is how I did it. This is my favorite beach in the world to shoot on. It's called Boracay and it's in the Philippines. The reason this beach is so popular for photographers and cinematographers is the sand. It is sugar white, as it was formed from white coral. When the sun is out, you cannot look at it without sunglasses because it is so bright. If I had shot the Nestle ad here, I would have achieved a balanced exposure of F22 on the sky and F22 on the talents because the sand acts like a giant reflector. I could have exposed at F22 and the talents would be bright and detailed. However, I did not shoot this ad in Boracay. The beach I shot it on was volcanic with dark brown sand. Thus, the ambient exposure on the talents was two stops lower than the blue sky. If I exposed for the sky, the talents would be underexposed. Because I wanted the sky to look dark, like sunset, I wanted it to be at least three stops under the exposure of the talents. So, I decided to raise the exposure of the talents by five stops, making them considerably brighter than the sky. I did this using reflectors, three silver reflectors facing the talents from the front, and one large white Griflon reflector on the floor to bounce back the sunlight as if the beach was white. I exposed at f32, plus I reduced my shutter angle to 90 degree, reducing the exposure a further two stops, plus an ND6 filter to reduce a further two stops. The sky was now underexposed and the talents were correctly exposed. This is an extreme example of penetrating the sky with exposure, but it shows well that controlling exposure is the answer to penetrating skies. There are other ways to reduce the exposure of the sky without having to increase the exposure of the subject, and a good cinematographer will know as many techniques as possible, so they can apply the most practical to the shots that they are executing. The balancing of this shot uses the simplest technique for darkening skies, filtration via a graduated ND and a linear polarizer. For this shot, which required balancing the exposure of the rising sun through the trees at f32 and the shadow area on the side of this van at f4, I used a graduated ND filter to darken the sky on the upper part of the frame, ensuring it does not affect the exposure of the van. Then, used reflectors to bring up the exposure of the van to match that of the sky. Let's return to this frame. The linear polarizer is being used to reduce the glare from the surface of the sea. It is also being used to reduce the haze in the sky, which is raising its exposure. The darker blue at the top of the frame is achieved by a graduated ND filter. 
This frame uses a completely different technique to darken its skies. Instead of using ND filters to knock down the blue, I am using orange filters. The side effect of this is a very warm hue to the image, and the darker the blue, the more it shifts to green. But it is a very good way to bring contrast to the clouds. This process is called nanometer transmission, and it works by blocking just blue light. Thus, the exposure of the blue sky can be reduced substantially, but the exposure of the white clouds are only affected minimally. The absence of the blue makes them hue towards the yellow, but they lose very little exposure. If you look at a lighting gel swatch book, you will see behind each gel a nanometer chart. This will indicate the nanometer transmission of each gel. The filter will have a filter factor, which is the amount of stops it reduces by shooting through it. The factor is an average of all light frequency. But if you study the chart, you can tell how much transmission each color frequency has. On this filter, about 80% of all warm light can pass through the filter, but almost no cold or blue light can pass through the filter. The factor of this filter is one stop but it is affecting only the blue light. So actually, blues are cut down by almost two stops, as warm colors are only stopped by 20%. So by shooting through this filter, I can reduce the exposure of blue light by almost two stops. I used only nanometer transmission to achieve this shot. Without it, the sky would have looked like this. This technique is very effective on film. However, as nanometer transmission is the process data sensors use, recognizing colors by allowing only the frequency of light through to the appropriate pixel, its effectiveness depends greatly on the sensor you are using. Let's return to this frame, which uses a post process to achieve its penetrated skies. If you are going to use post to deepen the blues of your skies, you must ensure you have an exposure that can capture all the detail you want to keep. You don't need to match it to your subject, just ensure there is some contrast to work with. I am going to demonstrate this process using Premiere, but almost all editing, effects or color correction softwares can achieve this relatively simple technique. Open your keyer of choice. I'm using color keyer here. Color pick the sky. A very rough key will appear, making the sky transparent. This key does not need to be perfect. Take the key material and place it on the timeline above the original material. It should be invisible. However, if you move the overlay, the two separate materials become apparent. I'm going to take the overlay away so we can see what I'm about to do. But actually, you can do this effect still in composite. Adjust the image setup using whatever color or contrast tools available till you get the sky you want. Notice how dark the subjects are. If I expose the sky to achieve this contrast, the subjects would have a similar exposure to this. Place the keyed material on top of the darkened image. Even a very rough key will work with this technique as the darkened image is printed through the gaps in the key, forming a complete image again. Let's compare the two exposures. First, the footage exposed for a good contrast of the subject. Now, a darkened image keyed underneath it. This is the simplest explanation of the process, but it gets much deeper. There are two kinds of color image data. Color subtractive, where the overlapping of the colors results in the color getting darker. This is similar to when we were children in the art class and we start mixing color paints. You put yellow in a mixing cup, then add blue and it goes green. Then we add red and we end up with a muddy brown color. Although some very advanced color corrective systems can be set up to color subtractive, data cameras and standard color grading equipment all work using the color additive system. This means the more colors we add, the closer we move to white. The combination of red, green and blue results in a white image. Understanding additive color theory is extremely useful to cinematographers and colorists. You see, additive color also works in reverse. Let's study this image on a parade scope. The three colored columns represent the amount of each color present in our composite frame. We can see there is currently a lot of red and green, but not a lot of blue, even though a majority of the image is blue sky. This is because the sky is closer to white than it is blue. 
the other two colors are present in the sky to make it look bright because I exposed it for the subjects. This window is my RGB curves in Premiere Color. This becomes a very useful tool because it allows us to decrease and increase any of the three colors without affecting the other two. Simply click the color you want to manipulate and reduce or increase the curve. Let's watch both the screen and the parade when I delete the red channel. The red on the scope has gone and the red on the image has all but gone, leaving the tent a washed out green color. Now, let's take out green. On the scope, we can see only the blue column is left, and on the screen, we can see the sky has gone solid blue. The more we overexpose the sky, the closer to white it becomes. White in an additive color system is made up of all three colors. As we have the ability to reduce any of the color channels within our data image, we can reduce the red and green that is being used to make the sky so close to white, leaving only the blue. We are looking at an extreme manipulation, but it shows the potential flexibility of this technique. Now, let's bring back our keyed foreground layer and add a little red and green back to the back layer. That looks like the image I was looking for, but could only be achieved using extreme exposure or post techniques. Now you have complete control over the added values of your sky. You don't have to stop at deep penetrated blues. I hope this film will be useful to you.